and welcome to this brand new series on the Aviator South Africa, Aviation History. My name is Kabir and I'm the host on the show with Warwick. Today on the show we'll be talking about the history of one of the oldest airlines still operating in the world, KLM. We hope that you are going to enjoy this new venture with us. Remember to give us some feedback in the comment section and please give us a like and make sure to subscribe. Also turn on notifications so you don't miss our upcoming videos. Enjoy the episode. This episode is in association with African Pilot Magazine. Subscribe to Africa's finest aviation magazine today. For more information, go to www.africanpilot.co.za. Producing this content takes a lot of time and effort. Therefore, why don't you become a member of our channel through Buy Me A Coffee or on our website. This will assist us financially and allow us to continue providing quality aviation content to South Africa and beyond. As a member of our channel, you will receive members-only aviation tech content reviews, get early YouTube videos and podcasts, and even get featured on our podcast and YouTube episodes. To do this, click on the links in the description. There's a buy me a coffee link and there's a a link in our website. If you click on the link to our website, you will get a 10-day free trial and then you can decide whether you'd like to continue. Alternatively, just buy us a coffee on the link below. $5 a coffee. Thank you for supporting us. Enjoy the episode. On 7 October 1919, the Royal Dutch Airlines for the Netherlands and Colonies was founded. The name was later abbreviated in Dutch to KLM. KLM took to the skies in the early 1920s, flying a leased to Havland aircraft between Amsterdam and London. This would later become the airline's flagship route. On the 1st of October 1924, KLM took off on its first intercontinental flight from Amsterdam to Jakarta. Its main objective was to make the Dutch colonies more accessible to people from the Netherlands. In 1925, KLM opened up its economy service. After doing this, the airline's passenger numbers increased by more than 25%. KLM was a big part of the jet age and harnessed the potential of jet-powered aircraft. They would later become a major operator of the Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747. Netherlands Airline Service, or NLM, was established in 1966 and was later named NLM City Hopper. This opened up KLM's domestic market which allowed KLM to carry more passengers than originally planned. The service had to be closed during World War II and was later reopened. The intention was to rapidly ferry business passengers from Amsterdam's Schiphol Airport. In July, January 1971, apologies, KLM received its first Boeing 747 aircraft. The airline flew this aircraft on its first route between Amsterdam and New York City. Later, KLM received its first Boeing 747 combi aircraft, which marked an important milestone in KLM's cargo operations. It enabled the airline to fly both passengers and pallets of freight, which for many years was important on the transatlantic routes. During July of 1989, KLM acquired a 20% stake in Northwest Airlines, which would later enable the airline to serve the US at greater capacity. This became reality later on when the US Transport Department granted KLM and Northwest Airlines to ramp up its flights from the United States. This was part of an elaborate scheme with Air France and Delta Airlines, which owned Northwest Airlines. In 1991, KLM City Hopper was formed by merging Netherlands and NLM. Presently, the KLM City Hopper fleet consists of 17 E-175 aircraft, 32 E-190 aircraft and 21 orders for the E-195 E-2 aircraft. KLM and Northwest launched the World Business Class to the public in 1994. It targeted business travellers and offered them a higher level of comfort between the economy and royal class product. 
In 2004, KLM officially merged with Air France, becoming Air France KLM Group. In 2003, KLM received its first Boeing 777-200ER. This aircraft has two engines instead of four of the Boeing 747. The 777 had provided much of the same seating capacity, making it more sustainable and efficient to fly. KLM operated this aircraft to Cape Town, Nairobi and New York. In 2004, Air France KLM joined the SkyTeam Alliance, which currently has more than 19 members worldwide. This alliance assisted KLM to fly to new destinations and provide their customers with greater choices. From the start of the airline, KLM was one handful of airlines that focuses on, on sustainability, which is not new for KLM. Air France KLM was listed on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index for the very first time in 2005. The airlines maintained their position all the way to 2016. KLM is a leading airline in biofuel production and the airline flew its first biofuel flight in 2011. In 2008, KLM printed its last paper ticket. The airline moved on to digital tickets in light of the growing concern over deforestation. In November of 2015, KLM received its first Boeing 787 Dreamliner. This was part of a fleet renewal process as KLM phased out its older, less sustainable and less efficient aircraft such as the Boeing 747. In 2019, KLM also celebrated its centenary. The airline partnered with a company called Tudelft to promote and design the future KLM aircraft and redesigned how we travel. The Flying V is a new concept from KLM and Tudelft, changing the way we travel. It features a V-shaped fuselage and assists in flying more sustainably. Right, we are going to be having a discussion about KLM and Air France and mainly about KLM's history. So KLM have a really big airport operation, I mean South African airport operation specifically. So we know that KLM's main hubs in South Africa are Johannesburg and Cape Town. Um, and it's really interesting to see. And KLM, I love KLM. And I always like to see what KLM has to hold for us, you know, in um, the years to come. Because KLM is such a sustainability-focused airline. And I am personally, uh, believe it or not, even though aviation is not a very sustainable career path, I love um, trying to be eco-friendly and really trying to do something good in terms of sustainability. So for me, it's interesting that in 2008 already, which was quite a long time ago, they stopped the paper ticket. So that's definitely the one of the first airlines to do that. But Warwick, what do you think about it? I was about to say, well, they fly quite a few flights into South Africa. They have their two, or they have a 747 flight into Joburg and a 777 flight into Cape Town. And then they also fly cargo into Joburg which is, and, or, and Cape Town, also on the same aircraft, just um, mainly based on cargo, which is the which is a very interesting discussion and topic. Could be a Definitely. So on the topic of cargo, KLM have a massive cargo division. Now their cargo division is Martin Air. Uh, Martin Air was initially separate from KLM Cargo, but KLM Cargo and Martin Air merged into one company. So you'll notice on the planes, if you look very carefully, it is by Mar operated by Martin Air or something to that extent. But Air France KLM, that alliance, was it a good move? Um, this is a really interesting question um, and it just depends on who you ask. But I personally think it was a good move. You know, the Air France KLM group is a big group and it's really important to Sky Team, etc. And it allows passengers a lot of freedom. I find that if you're stuck in one airline, you have not a lot of options assuming your flight is cancelled or anything to that extent. Whereas now there's, you know, Air France actually also have a big South African operation along with KLM. So KLM and Air France, um, you know, apart from British Airways, which I think has the monopoly, maybe Virgin, I think KLM Air France are also almost at that British Airways level. But, I mean, we are now talking at the time of recording this episode. Many airlines have retired the 747. 
British Airways being one, Qantas as well. And um, with BA, I mean, they've just retired it so abruptly that it's interesting to see. But Warwick, would you mind telling me about KLM's 747 situation? Yeah, essentially, they at the very close to the beginning of the South African lockdown, they just basically said that they can't run the, their, aircraft, their aircraft economically and they're a very eco airline in terms of fuel efficiency and how much environmental damage they're doing. So for them, the 747 didn't make much sense, although it was one of their flagship aircraft. And then they basically just said at the beginning, rough near the beginning of the South African lockdown that they are retiring their 747 with immediate response. And then mm. we heard that they were possibly going to keep a few for their cargo service. Yeah, so it wasn't like British Airways, which have just said with immediate effect, they are gone. Um, and But it was similar, although we are still seeing a couple of 747s flying in their cargo fleet, which are really beautiful aircraft to see. So KLM is such an interesting airline. I mean, their biofuel is just, they are on top game. They are on top of the airline industry with that. Something I want to, um, before we start wrapping up, I want to talk about to Delft and the flying V. And we're going to put an image up on the screen so that you can see. But the flying V is essentially an aeroplane. Why is it called the flying V? It has a V-shaped fuselage. This is meant to be um, economical. It's meant to be environmentally friendly and it's bigger and so it is better for the user comfort. So Warwick, do you think that the flying V is going to be taking shape? I definitely think it's going to work out quite well. And judging also by KLM's history of biofuel and economy and economic status, I think it's quite a good move from them. Definitely. And so KLM is a waiting game. COVID-19 has definitely shaped the aviation industry. It's killed a lot of airlines and aircraft. So we're going to wait and see. But KLM has had an amazing history so far for more than 100 years. So thank you, KLM. This is an extension of the Aviated South Africa podcast. Find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor and more. Look in the description for the links. Also, please like and subscribe. Happy flying. Thank you very much for tuning in to this week's Aviation History KLM Royal Dutch Airlines episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this, give this video a like and subscribe and enable notifications so you'll get notified for every new video or live stream. The music for today was um, done by Thomas Dewar and he always does our intro music for us but this song is very special this was a remix of helen jane long's the aviators and this song uh, the original really started it all and as a result the aviators south africa was born so thank you thomas for bringing the song back to life with an aviator south africa twist um you can go to soundcloud.com and search for blind sight um, under Tommy D's from South Africa. He is um, amazing and there should be some wonderful new songs coming out soon. Um, also thank you to Helen Jane Long obviously for the original. It's such a classic and it's really amazing. Um, also as part of the government Stay Safe campaign please visit their website at www.sacoronavirus.co.za for more information on how to protect yourself and how to stay safe at home uh, with the latest statistics and more. And we hope that you have really enjoyed this episode. Give us some feedback in the comment section and we love responding to your comments so keep the questions coming. We hope that you've enjoyed this episode and um, stay tuned for the next Aviation History episodes and Aviation Sunday episodes. Happy flying and stay safe.